Hello and welcome to the Orange County, um, excuse me, so the Education College Career Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event today. My name is Jeannie and I'm going to be your facilitator. We have a great group of institutions who are ready to tell you all about their institutions, their campuses, their programs. But before we get started, just a few housekeeping announcements. Your camera and your microphone are off today so our panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you will find a Q&A button on your screen. Please use that to type your questions to our presenters at any time during today's event. You do not need to wait until a certain institution is presenting. If you have questions for any or all of our schools today, you can submit them at any time. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on our website. And then this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash COSI. I will put that link in the chat for you all. But now on to our main event. I'm going to turn it over to Arcadia University. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Devin Miller and I'm a senior admissions counselor at Arcadia University and I'm also an Arcadia alum. So I have a little bit of a student and a staff perspective um, to offer folks. Um, and I will be your admissions counselor for anyone applying from this area. So I'll have my contact information up at the end. Um, but I wanted to just give a little bit of an overview for you about Arcadia for those who aren't too familiar. Um, you can see we have our beautiful castle right on campus. So that's always kind of a highlight and focal point of um, Arcadia life. But there's a lot more to Arcadia as an institution than just that. So starting off with just a little bit about who we are. Um, Arcadia is located in Glenside, Pennsylvania, which is a suburb just outside the city of Philadelphia. Um, we're just north of the city, about a 20 to 25 minute train ride um, from where we're located. We're a little bit of a smaller institution. So um, we have just over 2000 undergraduate students on campus, about 1300 graduate students. So a little over 3000 total. Um, which really allows for us to focus a little bit more on personalized attention and personalized learning experiences for our students, um, regardless of what your field of study is. Arcadia is a liberal arts institution, so we have more than 65 different fields of study, and there's a lot of flexibility for students to customize their academic path um, and study more than one thing if you wanted to double major, major and minor. Um, our most popular programs right now are biology, business, and psychology, with our arts programs coming up just behind that. Um, and we do have a few different graduate programs on campus as well. So we have programs like our physical therapy and physician assistant graduate programs where students have a four plus two track that they can be a part of um, as students at Arcadia. We also have a pretty vibrant uh, student life and campus life outside of the classroom. Um, even though we are a smaller school, we are a largely residential school. So the majority of students are spending most of their time on campus. Um, we do guarantee housing for all four years and there's tons of different housing options from traditional residence halls to suite style housing to our apartment style housing that um, we offer right across the street from campus. Um, and so we always are looking for ways that students can get involved and that we can connect students with ways to um, have fun both on campus and in the local community. We have more than we have uh, more than 60 student organizations on campus and 26 division three athletic teams. So there's a lot of ways that students can get involved um, anywhere from arts to fitness to service organizations to activism groups. Um, and being right outside the city of Philadelphia is a really great resource for our students as well. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for internships, professional development experience. Um, in our local area. Um, we often utilize Philadelphia as a way for students to get out of the classroom with their professor and their classmates um, to get more hands-on learning. If there's a museum exhibit or a show in Center City that's relevant to course material, we try and get students um, really involved into the, uh, the surrounding area as well. Another big piece of the Arcadia education is our global offering. So for anyone who's interested in studying abroad, Arcadia is definitely a really great place for that. You can see on this slide that um, more than 76% uh, of our students use their passports before they graduate, and we have a pretty wide global footprint. So there's a lot of different locations and programs that students can do. Um, if you're interested in getting that study abroad experience while in college, we have a couple programs right during your first year where students can spend um, uh, their week of their spring break abroad or even the entire semester, uh, spring semester of your first year abroad. And then we also offer 
two to three week long excursions, full semesters abroad, and even entire academic years abroad um, as upperclassmen students as well. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to explore the world and really get a more global education um, through, in our, through Arcadia. And then I wanna to briefly touch on the admissions process with a little bit of time I have left. Um, Arcadia is on a rolling admission cycle, so we don't have any really hard deadlines that you need to meet for admission. Um, we are continuously reviewing applications all throughout the year and we'll always have a decision for you in about two to three weeks of when you apply. You just need to submit your common application or we are on the coalition for college application as well. And then um, a high school transcript or, and a letter of recommendation from a teacher or a school counselor. Um, we do have the option for students to submit SAT or ACT scores, an essay, and a resume. I always strongly encourage students to submit the essay and resume piece, but um, I don't necessarily think um, majority of students need to submit their SAT or ACT scores. We'll never use them to your disadvantage. Um, we'll only use them if they can help your application, but unless you're performing exceptionally well on the SAT or ACT above a 1300 or above a 28 on the ACT, um, they're not really a necessary part of your application. And then for anyone interested in one of our art uh, programs, studio art or our acting programs, there is an additional step there to do a portfolio review or an acting audition. Um, but other than that, we don't actually admit students to specific majors. We'll just admit you to the university and then you can declare any major that we offer. Um, aside from those two programs, those are the only ones that have that additional step or those additional requirements. We do automatically review students for scholarships as well when you apply. So all of uh, these application credentials help us determine what scholarship scholarship you might be awarded, and we have a range from about ten to thirty thousand dollars that students can be awarded upon admission um, through the scholarship program. Um, and that's all I really have for you. I know it was limited time, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or pop them in the chat, and I'm happy to connect with you um, further. But my email and my direct office line are both up here on the slide if anyone wants to take a picture, and I'll also drop it in the chat. Thank you all so much. Fantastic. Well, that was a great way to get us started, Arcadia University. Thank you so much. We're going to keep on moving now, and we're going to hear from Binghamton University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Oops. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm just going to start my time here. All right, let me get my screen shared. Okay. All right, so my name is Stephanie Swim. I work in enrollment management here at Binghamton University. I am also an alum at Binghamton. I went to graduate school at Binghamton. So um, I, you know, they can't seem to get rid of me. I'm here now professionally. So um, very exciting. Uh, Binghamton is one of 64 public schools in New York. So we are part of the largest public university system in the country. Binghamton is number one academically in placement, uh, resources on campus, caliber faculty offerings, all of the above. So um, we're most notably known as the public Ivy of the Northeast, um, the SUNY Ivy. So we're really proud of kind of all those accolades that we've earned. In terms of location, Binghamton's in a really great spot. We always just like to mention this quickly. We're really centrally located to all of the major metropolitan areas. And this is huge because we are a very um, highly recruited university. We have very high quality stud students. And so, you know, we're, we're close to those areas, not only for students and families, but also for those recruiters that, um, that are working for those companies that want our students. So that's always a great aspect of Binghamton. Um, quick statistics, Binghamton has about 14,000 undergraduate students, about 3,000 in a first year class. We have about 4,000 graduate students now. Um, our retention rate is 92%, so that's super high. Um, that means 92% of students choose to return to Binghamton after their first year. So we always like to note that our national average um, and the national average is 73%. So you can see that it's it's much higher than, than that. Um, our academic profile is here. These are mid 50% ranges. So this is kind of the middle of the bell curve here. Um, we are at that IV tier. So th these are pretty high. But um, I will say that we are test optional this year because of the pandemic and the climate surrounding COVID. So you, you don't have to submit test scores. And my advice is if you're not within our ranges, it probably won't benefit you in any way. So you really do have that option now, which is nice. Okay, so Binghamton is comprised of one university, but we um, are, are made up of six different schools. We have our Car Harper College of Arts and Sciences. This is quite the range. Um, we're a big STEM school, so it's got all the hard sciences. Number one program is biology. Number two is neuroscience. Number three is psychology. 
Um, this is also where our pre-health tracks are housed, so pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental, pre-therapy, pre-pharmacy, um, as well as pre-law, which are popular as well. We have our College of Community and Public Affairs. This is for human development and social work. Decker College of Nursing and Health Sciences. This is a direct entry nursing program. Um, one of the most competitive in the country now. It's a small competitive program at Binghamton and placement out of Decker is 100%. Our School of Management is our business and accounting school. Uh, so we have accounting and business administration with eight different concentrations to choose from for, for business. Um, this is a highly recruited school. These students usually sign on the dotted line their junior year. We are the number one feeder for the top four accounting firms and the four 500 financial firms in New York City. So placement is phenomenal for the school as well. Same for Thomas J. Watson College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Five different engineering programs to choose from mechanical, electric, um, biomedical, and then computer science. And then we have our PharmD program in our School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. So um, that's newly accredited. We have a brand new pharmacy building on campus that's gorgeous, um, pharmacy and health sciences building. It has pseudo pharmacy labs and medicinal garden. So we have a lot of up and coming fun things for that, for that program. Uh, we do have more than 50 accelerated fast track programs, accelerated MBA is popular at Binghamton. Um, so those are four plus one degrees, we call them. And again, our pre-professional programs, pre-had, pre-health, pre -health, pre-pharmacy, pre-law, we have our education mi minor. So lots of different um, subject areas you can choose from. Okay, our honors programs. So Binghamton is an R1 research institute, which means um, we produce and provide the highest amount of research activity among on a research scale. So we're one of the few in the Northeast. So we have naturally have a lot of honors programs attached to that. You can go on our website to look at how these work. They are invitation only. So when you apply to Binghamton, your application also considers you for these programs. And these are just kind of a great added bonus. It helps you start research right away. It immerses you in Binghamton's extensive research community. Um, so these are just great options for our students. Okay, we have um, what we like to call the Binghamton Impact. So this is a culmination of research, internships, service learning, and education abroad. I mentioned our research. Um, we have internships and many of them are built into our programs. We have a nationally recognized award-winning career and professional development center on campus called our Fleischmann Center. So they do a lot with our students in terms of that development and placement. We have service learning on campus, a lot of classes you can take for credit in terms of service learning. So helping communities and, and special populations. And then for education abroad, um, we are among the largest a broad network in the country. We have access to over a thousand programs at Binghamton, more than 30% of our students study abroad. So that's a really high number. Okay, I'm gonna probably go fast here. Um, student life, we have a very active work hard, play hard environment. Our students, um, they're just really involved. It's a very progressive campus. There's over 450 student run clubs and organizations. We're a division one school, um, active music and theater. You can learn more about our housing and dining on our website. Okay, in terms of value, we are a public Ivy. So we always say we offer you a public or an Ivy League experience at a public school price. Um, this is our out of state tuition. We do uh, provide students with a lot of merit aid. So this is usually just the ticket price. There's a lot of opportunities for merit there. There's my timer. Um, so those are the scholarship. And here is our visit page. So you can go on there and check out some pre-recorded sessions we have that we recorded last year for COVID on student life, student services, uh, programs, information sessions, all of that. And there is my contact email. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Binghamton University. It is not easy to get all of this important information in in six minutes, but you all are doing a great job. I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is live. So get your questions in and we're going to turn it over now to SUNY Cortland. Take it away. All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Bersani, and uh, I'm proud to uh, work at SUNY Cortland in upstate New York in the uh, geographic center of New York State. Um, as others have mentioned, uh, six minutes is an impossible time frame to tell you everything that you should know about Cortland, uh, but I want to give you the basics and focus on uh, a few key points here. All right, so SUNY Cortland, um, we're a medium sized school uh, in upstate New York, uh, about 45 minutes north of Binghamton half hour uh, from Syracuse to the north, and about four hours from, from New York City. Uh, we offer close to 70 majors across our School of Arts and Sciences and Professional Studies and um, our, our School of Education. 
And, you know, we pride ourselves on being a top choice for um, academically strong students. Uh, we uh, routinely are rated an A-plus school for, for B students. Most of our students are, are high B, low A uh, average, uh, and we're a, a Division III um, athletics institution. We'll talk about sports in, in a second. All right, so uh, one of the most important things to know about Cortland is that we're strong across uh, all 68 of our majors. So we were founded as uh, the Cortland Normal School, um, really strong uh, for, for future teachers. Uh, but if you looked at our most popular majors, you'd see uh, majors like biology, psychology, communication studies, sport management, exercise science, uh, and, and speech pathology. Now, uh, a few of the things you would see if you visited us in person is more than $350 million we've invested uh, in facilities over the past decade. Uh, Moffitt Center houses our, our business program. There's Bloomberg terminals there for you to use. It also houses uh, popular programs like criminology. Our Dowd Fine Arts Center was renovated in uh, 2014. Uh, so if you like to perform on stage, if you want to audition for our uh, BFA program in musical theater, we're one of only three uh, public programs in, in New York State, you would spend a lot of time here in, in Dowd. Bowers Hall, which houses uh, the natural sciences at Cortland. Uh, so if you're interested in going on to, to medical school or dental school on that pre-med or pre-dental track that we have, you're going to spend a lot of time in our science facility, which was renovated in uh, 2014 as well. Our professional studies building houses majors like exercise science and sport management. It has a speech clinic um, where our students gain hands-on practice and, and serve the community. And it also houses our uh, renowned program in recreation parks and, and leisure studies. And then um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our, our Student Life Center. So uh, this is a 50 plus million dollar building. Uh, it's a crown jewel of, of campus recreation and it really is uh, one of a kind. Um, you're looking now at uh, exercise equipment on the uh, second floor of our Student Life Center. There's a running track, a climbing wall, um, a mind body room, combatives room, an arcade, um, everything you could ever imagine in our uh, one of a kind Student Life Center. Another really important thing uh, to know about Cortland is that uh, Red Dragon pride runs deep. Uh, we, we wear it on, on our clothes, um, but, but we're, we're proud to be Red Dragons here. We're, we're proud to be a, a supportive campus community. Um, so, you know, if you tour Cortland, um, you, you would maybe observe that we're a Division Three school. We're not a, a Division I school, but uh, we have Division I caliber facilities. Um, our baseball team won the national title in, in 2015. Um, many of our uh, 25 uh, NCAA programs are, are nationally ranked. Uh, we have even more sport clubs and uh, more than 70 different intramural opportunities. Um, and, and many of these programs use our, our main athletics facilities as well. In the distance, you're seeing our um, football stadium, which houses um, our Cortica Jug game every, every two years. So, um, you know, when we talk about athletics, I mentioned the opportunities that, that extend from the Division three level all the way uh, to intramurals. Um, one really cool thing about Cortland that I, I like to tell people is that um, we set the Division three attendance record for a sporting event a few years ago at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. We're actually set to host our Cortica Jug game um, at uh, Yankee Stadium in, in two years. So hopefully you're part of our first year class that gets to go to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx and see us take on Ithaca College. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Another really important thing is that we value outcomes in, in what you're doing after Cortland. So Career Services puts together a graduate outcomes report every year. They break it down by major. So if you're interested in seeing sample job titles that students can get in a specific program at Cortland, visit cortland.edu slash outcomes um, and you can browse that, that PDF report. Uh, we're really proud to, to rank high for the, the value that, that we provide at Cortland. Now, in terms of first year admissions, uh, a few things that, that are important to note. Uh, we are test optional for the upcoming academic year. I mentioned uh, the, the grades that we look for. Uh, we look really closely at the courses you're taking in high school. We do want to make sure that, that you're prepared uh, for, for college, um, but we are test optional for, for the upcoming year uh, when we talk about first year admissions at, at Cortland. Last thing um, to know is that affordability matters, and we're really, again, proud of, of the value that we provide at Cortland. One thing that you need to know before we wrap up here is that um, we offer a future New Yorker award at Cortland. 
Uh, so all accepted students from the state of California um, who are full-time students will receive that future New Yorker award to help bring the uh, build cost closer to uh, what an in-state resident would pay in, in New York. Last thing I'll, I'll mention is just that our, our early action deadline is November 15th. Our recommended application date is December 1st. You can visit courtland.edu slash apply. And um, I'm sharing the, the main contact information for our admissions office on the screen here. I'll also share my personal information in the chat. Thanks very much. Great. Well, thank you so much, Sumi Cortland. Another great presentation. We will head now a little bit further south. We're going to hear from Florida Southern College. Whenever you are ready, take it away. All right. So heading, yeah, definitely a little bit further south. Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Barnes. I'm one of the senior admissions counselors at Florida Southern. Um, Despite the name, Florida Southern is actually located in a town called Lakeland, Florida, which is right smack dab in the center of the state. So we're about an hour outside of Tampa and about an hour outside of Orlando, depending on traffic, within driving distance of about 8 million people in a town of about 115,000. So really nicely placed kind of in the center of Florida um, for all sorts of cool stuff. And we are about 3,000 total students. So a little bit smaller and definitely a very close-knit community. In terms of academics, Florida Southern operates kind of five different schools within the college, but aside from the nursing program, which is a direct entry Bachelor of Science in Nursing and some of the BFA programs like musical theater, you apply to the college as a whole and to tell us what you're interested in majoring in. Um, those couple programs do have some additional review processes, so we ask that you list those first on your application. But otherwise, if you are interested in, say, being an accounting major with a minor in dance, then that's totally possible and we will work with you kind of mix and match and combine academic programs. Um, some of our big claims to fame are anything in the life sciences, so biology, marine biology, environmental science. Business is really big for us, everything from kind of a standard business administration degree to accounting to business analytics and data work. Um, we have a brand new computer science building that literally just opened a couple weeks ago. Um, obviously the nursing program is really big. And then I would probably round that out with education and communication as kind of our next biggest majors. Um, in terms of opportunities to continue on at FSC for master's degrees, you also have those four plus one programs. So if you have any questions about your academic goals, let me know and I'll be here as a resource to help. Regardless of what you're studying though, we really do wanna emphasize that hands-on experience, very high impact. We want you to get a chance to do research, to go on to conferences, to get the chance to publish before you graduate. Um, and you can do that really throughout your entire four-year career at Florida Southern. One of the other things that we really wanna recognize is that a lot of your learning in college happens outside of the classroom. So there's a couple of things that we use to kind of structure your experience at FSC, what we call the three guarantees. So the first big one is that we wanna make sure you'll get a chance to study abroad and really dive into having that international experience. We do wrap a credit towards the cost of studying abroad into the cost of your tuition. So if you have any questions about using that journey, the junior journey credit, let me know. We also guarantee at least one internship. It's pretty common for students to graduate with four or five under their belt, whether that's right here in Lakeland with places like public supermarkets, Geico, Lockheed Martin, in places like Tampa or Orlando, obviously being close to Disney, that's a big draw for a lot of students, but also with internships around the country and around the world. So definitely a big network there. And then we also want you to graduate on time. So we do guarantee that for your graduation as well to really help you kind of launch into the next phase of your life. So typically speaking, about a third of the graduating class will continue on into graduate school in some form, whether that's med school, um, professional school, going into business like an MBA. And then the other two thirds will continue on into like the workforce at a variety of locations. The unofficial fourth guarantee is that we guarantee housing for all four years. So we are a residential school and you can kind of see down there in the bottom left. That is pretty much my view from my office where I'm sitting right now. So we are located right on the lake and you've got a really wonderful community here to be part of while you're on campus. Athletics wise, we're a division two school. So if you have questions about getting involved with the D2 sports, let me know and I can help connect you with the coaches. If you're not interested in playing at the D2 level and you just wanna get involved with say club sports like esports or ice hockey, or if you're interested in playing intramurals, those are also definitely options available to you. 
And if sports aren't your thing, there's a ton of other stuff to do on campus. So whether you're really into the idea of being part of Greek life, getting involved in community service, it's really hard to be born in Central Florida, in Lakeland and in our campus. So there's a lot of things to do. Application wise, um, our application will be open until March with a couple different deadlines that you can choose from within that. Um, generally speaking, I would suggest applying earlier just so that you can get it out of the way. But if you do need all the way until that March 1st deadline to get your materials together, that's okay too. We'll ask for a copy of your high school transcript in addition to your letter of recommendation um, and your application itself. But there is no supplemental essays. If you're completing the Common App, we'll just use your Common App essay. And SAT or ACT scores are optional. Um, the middle 50% is there for you to kind of take a look at. Um, if you do have questions about kind of the review process for any particular majors like nursing or about the application process as a whole, I'm happy to provide that as well. We automatically review you for merit aid based on your application as well. And there is a ton of scholarships available. Um, I will also be your first year financial aid counselor, so I'm more than happy to talk you through the process and help with any questions you might have on this end. Um, we are open for visits, both on campus and virtually. So if you are interested in checking those out, definitely take a look at the visit page. And I will wrap up with my contact information here and an encouragement to let me know what I can do to help with as you're kind of working your way through the admissions process. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Florida Southern College. We will head back up north now. We're going to hear from Bard College um, at Simons Rock. Okay, take it away whenever you are ready. And just one more reminder that that Q&A is open. Thank you, my name is Amanda Dabrowski. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Bard College at Simons Rock. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is an overview picture of our campus. We're located in a um, semi-rural or rural area of Massachusetts, the western part of the state. It's very outdoorsy, also very artsy. Um, here are some fast facts about our school. So we're located in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, which is about equidistant between Boston and New York City. Um, a little bit closer to Boston. Our town was actually ranked the best small town in the country by Smithsonian Magazine because of the amount of culture that we have for the size of our town. We are a very small school, so there's a lot of personal attention. Um, everyone knows everyone. It's a really tight-knit and open um, and accepting community. We have about 400 students in our college. The average class size is 11, um, and we're uh, highly ranked uh, academically. That's what we're known for is our strong academics. Um, Princeton Review rated us uh, 92 out of 100, um, which was actually higher than they ranked uh, Harvard and Princeton. Um, our, our teaching um, and uh, education are, are highly ranked. You can see some of the other uh, figures here as well. So we are an early college. That's the most important thing to know about us. What that means is that our students actually leave high school early to come to our college, usually after the 10th or 11th grade. This is a picture of our founder, Betty Hall. She worked at a boarding school near Boston and some of her students came back and visited her and told her they felt like there wasn't that much of a difference between the end of high school and the beginning of college. And so she had the idea to sort of bridge the two and she started Simon's Rock on land that her family owned um, in Great Barrington. Um, we've really changed and innovated a lot over the years. Um, we uh, offer an Associate of Arts degree on the way to the bachelor's degree. We are an uh, all gender school um, and we are affiliated with Bard College in upstate New York. That's why we have Bard in our name. Um, and the school um, is called Simon's Rock because there is an actual rock on our campus left over from the Ice Age. So it's a, what's called the glacial erratic. So it's a huge boulder. Um, and uh, Betty Hall, our founder, had really fond memories of her time playing there when she was a child. Um, and so that's why she decided to call the school Simon's Rock. This is our mission and a picture of Betty on top of Simon's Rock. Uh, really, it's that age doesn't define intellect. We believe that for many students, they're ready for the challenge of college. Um, at a younger age, both academically and socially, emotionally. 
Uh, here's a quick uh, visual um, picture uh, that I'll go through about our academic program. So we are a four-year college. Um, we do, we, our students actually receive um, an associate's degree, though, on the way to the bachelor's degree. Uh, they receive an associate's degree in liberal arts. We are a liberal arts college, um, so students study a little bit of everything um, because we believe that provides the best foundation for no matter what you want to do. So you really focus on your liberal arts um, core curriculum in the first two years, um, and then in your later two years, you'll focus on your area or areas of interest. So um, we're very writing focused school. So you'll do a writing and thinking workshop right when you come to campus. Over your first two years, you'll take uh, a core curriculum, things like math, science, uh, cultural perspective, art, et cetera. Um, it's about half of your classes in your first two years, but there is some freedom and flexibility in what you take. And then those other half of your classes, you're taking whatever you're interested in. You go through a moderation process during your sophomore year where you work with your advisor. We have a robust uh, advising system here. You'll work with your advisor and some other um, faculty to map out what your next two years will look like at Simons Rock. You'll pick your concentration. That's what we call our majors. Um, then you move into what we call the upper college, the later two years, the junior and senior years. That's where you're really focusing on your area or areas of interest. We have over 30 um, programs that you can study um, in STEM, um, social sciences, the arts, language and literature, and some programs that are interdisciplinary. Many of our students spend some time off campus. We really encourage them to during the junior year in particular. Um, and so they might study away or study abroad because we're a part of a BARD, they can do one of our programs or they can do a BARD program or they can find their own. Um, we're also part of the Open Society University Network um, through BARD and that allows our students to take classes online um, at colleges around the world. Most of our students, over 60%, um, study away or study abroad, usually during the junior year. Um, during their senior year, they're really focusing on their major again, as well as a senior thesis. All our students do a senior thesis. It's a big project slash research paper, um, and they're printed and bound um, and put in our library. Um, and then you'll receive a bachelor's degree at the end, but you actually get two because we're part of Bard College in New York. You'll get a degree from us, Simon's Rock, as well as Bard in New York. So we are a college, so even though our students are younger, you have all the benefits uh, of a traditional college. So there are a lot of um, uh, clubs and activities. We have interest clubs as well as um, identity or affinity clubs. Some examples would be things like um, uh, um, the International Students Club, uh, Chess Club, Women in STEM, um, Black Students Union, things like that. Uh, most of our students live on campus. Um, the, there is uh, guaranteed housing for students. Um, and we do um, have some sports. We're not a big sports school, to be honest. We're not in a, a division, but um, students play um, uh, basketball, swimming, soccer, volleyball, rock climbing, cross country, and fencing. Um, we also have a robust wellness center. And, and if students need to, to use that, that's right on campus. Typical events, you know, activities and events. Um, there is a bit more su support and supervision because our students are younger. For instance, we have robust advising um, and there are a couple other things that if you have questions about I can, can share, but for the most part, um, you have the typical college experience. We use our own application. We also accept the common application. Most of our students receive financial aid, over 80% need-based and merit-based. Um, this uh, slide shows what we require and the process for applying for financial aid. But if you have questions later on, definitely let me know. Um, and this uh, is my contact information, but I'll also put it in the chat. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bard College at Simons Rock. We are going to go now to our last institution for this portion of the event, and we're going to hear from Pace University. Take it away, Pace. Of course, thank you so much. My name is Jessica. I'm an undergraduate admission counselor at Pace University. Pace University is a four-year private university located in New York. We do have two campuses, our New York City campus in downtown Manhattan, right in the financial district of New York City, and our Westchester County campus just north of New York City. At Pace, we have something that we like to call the Pace Path. It's sort of like every student's individualized roadmap, 
It's how we combine your academic growth with your personal growth and your professional growth. So every student, when they come to Pace, takes a class called University 101, where we help you plan out your four years at Pace. Your academic portion of your Pace path might consist of research experiences with your professors, and your professional portion um, will be through our career services department. Career services is a great department to connect with early on in your Pace path. You can connect with a career advisor who's going to help you build your resume, write cover letters. They will do practice mock interviews with you, and they're really going to help you find those internships. At Pace, we really emphasize that hands-on learning. We know that internships are where job offers usually come from, and we want you gradu graduating with a job. These are the six schools we have within Pace University. We have more than 100 undergraduate majors. For the most part, the majors overlap between campuses, but there are some that are specific to campus. So for example, our School of Performing Arts is only offered on the New York City campus, and our Direct Admit Nursing program is only offered on the Westchester campus. No matter what major you choose, the average classroom size is going to be about 20 students in a classroom. So fairly small classroom sizes, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your professor, you're never sitting in a huge lecture hall with 300 students. 90% of PACE undergraduates are employed or continuing education within six months of graduation. So like I said, our career services is going to help you make those connections. Being where, where we are in the New York metro area, those, there is no shortage of companies looking for those young new interns. You can do a paid internship, you can do one for class credit, or you can do one just to build up that resume, but PACE is going to help you make all of those connections. For our two different campuses, like I said, our New York City campus is in downtown Manhattan, right in the financial district of New York City. We are at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge, across the street from City Hall, about two blocks away from the World Trade Center, and we're about a five minute walk away from Wall Street. Something cool about our New York City campus is a lot of New York City schools are spread out, but Pace is not. It is all within a five block radius of each other, so you never have to take the subway to get to class. Everything is right there in walking distance. Within that five block radius, we have our four residence halls. Housing is guaranteed all four years, as long as you submit your deposit before May 1st, but it's also never required. So you could live on campus or off campus. That is completely up to you. About 75% of our first year students do live on campus. And we do have students coming from 48 different states. So you would not be alone in coming from out of state. Our Westchester campus is located 30 miles north of the New York City one. This campus is a more traditional college campus in a suburban area. You do get the best of both worlds on the Westchester campus because you have that traditional college campus, but you're still about a 40 minute train ride into New York City. We have 200 acres of land on this campus and it's also home to our environmental center and our division two athletics. So if you're interested in playing a sport, you would be on the Westchester campus. When you're applying, we are on the Common App, or you can use our own Pace University application. If you're already doing the Common App and that's easier for you, then go right ahead and do that because we have no preference between the two applications. The average GPA for an incoming student is a 3.3. That is the average GPA. Half the students fall above that and half fall below that. And we do have a very holistic reviewing process of the application. So we're not just going to look at your GPA and make a decision. PACE is fully test optional, so we do not require SAT or ACT scores. You will still be considered for the Honors College and you will still be considered for Merit Scholarship. These are some different deadlines. We have early decision, which is binding due November 1st. And then we have early action, which is non-binding. So this is a great choice for students who are really interested in PACE and want to get their decision back a little bit earlier, but aren't quite ready to make a commitment. Early action would be a good choice for you. And those are due November 15th and December 1st. Students applying to our School of Performing Arts, it is due December 15th, and regular decision is due February 15th. If you plan to submit the FAFSA, I strongly recommend that you do it by December 1st. If you submit the, the FAFSA by December 1st, you're automatically going to receive a $1,000 scholarship from PACE, which is renewable each year just for submitting the FAFSA. You don't even need to be applied to PACE yet. 26,000 is the average amount of aid given to PACE students each year. When you apply, you're automatically considered for merit scholarship. So you don't have to do anything extra. All you do is apply and you have that automatic consideration. And that is separate from your financial aid package, which again, you would get by submitting the FAFSA. This is my contact information. I will also drop it in the chat, jdrennan2 at pace.edu. Thank you all so much for coming and please let me know if you have any questions.
Wonderful. Thank you so much for closing us out with that portion, Pace University. And thank you again to all of our institutions for these great presentations. I'm going to ask all of our presenters to now join me on video here. And we're going to take the last few minutes to do a brief Q&A. Uh, I want to start with an important question for all of you leaning into your expertise, helping students go through the college search process. What is one piece of advice that you would give someone? And I'm going to ask you to limit it just to one. That way our, our uh, presenters at the end of the lineup don't have all the best answers taken at the beginning, but we will go in the same order starting with Arcadia. I would say the um, biggest piece of advice would be to talk to as many people as you can at the schools that you're looking at. So um, do your best to get connected with um, not just your admissions counselor, but also um, faculty, staff, and other students um, at the school to really get a feel for what it's going to be like on campus. And a lot of times your admissions counselor can help you facilitate that. So definitely reach out to us with those questions that we can then get you connected with other folks for. Great advice. I was going to say talk to current students. That's usually a good indicator of campus life programs, all of the above. Um, I would say then reach out to faculty. I know Binghamton has um, all of our program sites. They do a wonderful job at providing those faculty contacts for students. Our faculty love when prospective students reach out. They offer them to come and sit in on courses. They give you a good idea of what curriculum will look like, outcomes. Um, different kind of pathways that you can get through those programs. So definitely um, do your due diligence in talking to students and, and current faculty for sure. One thing I would say is, um, you know, identify colleges that may offer a, a few different academic majors or programs that you're interested in. Uh, sometimes plans change or, you know, your eyes are open to opportunities or, or maybe smaller majors that you hadn't heard of uh, when you were in, in high school or at a previous institution. So um, sometimes smaller programs can be even better than, than what a, a college or university is known for. And don't feel bad if you don't know what you, uh, what you want to study or major in when, when you get to college. Sometimes it's, it's better to go in as a, as a pre-major student. I think my advice is probably gonna be a little bit more practical. Make a specific college email and check it frequently because that's how you'll find out about a lot of different programs and things that are going on. Like um, for us, if you're eligible for like flight reimbursements and stuff like that. So make sure you're keeping an eye on your email because that's a really important way that colleges will communicate with you. And I would say um, just to do exactly what you're doing by being here today, uh, learning about colleges, try to learn about all different colleges, um, not just the colleges that you've already heard of or the ones that are in your backyard. There's thousands of colleges in the US alone. So there, there's probably many out there that could be a great fit for you that you're just not aware of. And my advice is a little bit more on the financial side. Um, start looking for third party outside scholarships now. A lot of schools accept outside scholarships and a lot of students don't start looking for them until the spring or when it's getting close to May 1. But I definitely recommend starting to look for them now. Ask around in your community. Just search through Google for outside third party scholarships because those can really add up. Great advice. Everyone, we're going to use these last few minutes to get a little bit more from your institutions now. So rapid fire, what is one thing you want students to remember about your schools? Uh, Arcadia, go ahead and kick us off again. Um, so one thing about Arcadia is that even though we're a smaller school, we have a really wide global footprint. So if you're looking for a place where you can really get a global education, um, Arcadia is definitely a good place to, to keep in mind. Um, I would say that one thing about Binghamton is that we're, you know, we're, we're at that IV tier and I think that um, a lot of times students can, you know, think that that would lead, you know, is a cutthroat environment and students aren't very nice to each other and Binghamton is just not that. Um, we have, it's a very collaborative, envi collaborative environment. Um, it's, we just have really nice students and, you know, we try to make um, our campus, a place where everybody feels comfortable and secure and safe. And um, Binghamton is definitely something that, um, that we always try to convey that. And that's something that I think we emulate pretty well. Uh, one thing to remember about Cortland, I think, you know, we offer that division one experience at a division three medium-sized institution. Um, I hope that 
um, if, if you are attending school in the fall of 2022, that uh, we see you at, at Yankee Stadium, that you're there cheering on our, our Red Dragons against Ithaca College. Go Red Dragons. I'll return to those three guarantees that I talked about a little bit in terms of guaranteed internships, guaranteed chance to study abroad, guaranteed four-year uh, graduation, because that's really central to our kind of identity as a college. And I would say uh, to remember that we're an early college, meaning that our students leave high school early to come here, generally after the 10th or 11th grade. So they're not graduating high school, they're leaving high school early and starting college. And I would say for PACE, if you really want to get those internships while you're a student, if you want to get that hands-on and immersive experience during those four years in school, um, then PACE University is a great option for you because we really do have a lot of those opportunities outside of your academics. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. I want to thank all of our presenters here for all of this great information that they have shared, but also for all of our attendees. Thank you for taking time and joining us for this important uh, event today. Uh, just a few reminders as we close up here. Uh, you, When you close your browser today, you will have a very quick five questions survey if you could give us some information about today's event that will help us do a better job with these in the future. Uh, this is one of many events so make sure you take a look at that schedule again and jump into a few more sessions today and then last but not least this session along with all of the others are being recorded so you can catch those at strivescan.com forward slash c-o-s-i and once again thank you everyone have a wonderful rest of your day bye-bye now.